In this section, we're going to briefly explain what reason is and how it works. I'm not going to go into major details on any one subject. Just think of it as an introduction where we get to kick the tires and get a basic overview. Once we see what reason is made up of, then we'll be able to break it down into separate sections and we'll get to know the nitty gritty of uh, what each part does, okay? So let's begin. In most studios, we have racks and racks of several different types of devices, uh, things that make sounds like uh, drum machines, samplers, synths, and so on. Let's start off with a blank slate and play some instruments from within Reason. Now, I have an Akai MPK49 controller that I'll be using that connects up to your computer via a standard USB cable. From the file menu, select New or the appropriate shortcut right here. And once you do that, you'll create a new document which makes up an empty rack where the only thing inside this rack seemingly is the mixer right here, 14 into two mixer. You can see there's 14 different channels. Now, just like in the real world, if you have a rack with a mixer in there and there's nothing plugged into that mixer, you'll hear nothing, right? We actually need to add something into this rack, something that will make a sound, an instrument. Now, we can do this in a few different ways. We can right click in an empty area down here and we can select any of these seven choices between these two lines. Here are your sound making devices or your, or your instruments. We can select from the same list underneath the Create menu. You know this is the exact same list. Or we can drag over the new tool window, which you can show or hide underneath the Window button and using this shortcut as well. So if we have the tool window across here and we're on the Devices tab, if we select all of these guys, then we have a selection of all of the devices that we can drag over into here. We have a virtual music store of all of these devices, but if we uncheck more and effects, we'll just be left with the sound making devices, the instruments. And you'll notice there are seven examples here. There's three synthesizers, two samplers, a loop player, and a drum machine. Now let's make something happen really quickly by just dragging over the Dr. Rex loop player, drag it over into the rack, I'll move this out here, and we can preview that to actually make some sounds. Now you notice a couple of things have happened. Firstly, have you noticed that your roadie has come along here and automatically labeled this first channel here, the name of this device that is automatically being placed into channel one here. You can see Dr. X1, Dr. X1 right there. Now, if I was to preview this loop, you can see that it's coming into this channel and you can do anything you would normally do with a mixer in the real world. We could adjust its volume just by clicking and dragging that fader down. Now the rotary controls might be a little less intuitive. You just select them. If you drag up, it'll move them to the right or drag down, it'll move them to the left. I'll put that back right in the middle. Let me just stop this guy here. Now if I wanna rename this device, then I would click down on the device and let me rename this say my loop and enter. And you can see that those changes have been reflected right there on the mixer. Now you can scroll up and down through these various loops within Dr. X. Or you can click on this little folder icon and you'll come to see that we have hundreds, absolutely hundreds of loops to choose from, all organized into different genre folders, which autoplay when you select them, as long as this is selected down here, then any one of these guys that you audition will automatically play. Let's close this out. So what we've just learned is that Reason is like a virtual rack in which you place instruments or sound making devices. When you drag an instrument across into the rack, it's automatically patched up into the next available channel uh, in your mixer. And in the case of the Dr. X loop player, you just select your loop and you just play it. Now this works as simply because loops are something that you just select. You, you don't really play them from the keyboard here. Um, but the first five devices that we'll find are more of what you'd think of as a, like a standard synth module. In other words, you connect them to your keyboard and you know you have to actually do the playing. Let's take a look at them. 
Dragging the tool window across, we can drag any of these instruments into an empty part of the rack. Let's drag over the subtractor analog synth, the first of our synths, into our rack. And just like you'd expect, any newly created instrument is automatically connected up to our mixer and check it out, it's already been named. Now, if I select this subtractor here, then like you'd expect, you can play this sound from any connected keyboard. And you can see that the note on is reflected here on the graphical interface. Now you can pitch bend or modulate sounds just like you'd expect from the keyboard. And you can see any changes you make are reflecting these very cool looking graphics that are on screen. Now just like the Dr. Rex player, remember how we're scrolling through the loops? We can scroll through patches within this subtractor polyphonic synthesizer. So I could be playing a bass sound, then a pad sound, then a synth lead. Or just like we did up here when you click on the folder icon, remember we were looking through loops here? Now we're looking through patches and you can audition them straight here within this patch browser. Or just like we saw in the loops, we can browse through folders and we have all of our subtractor patches all neatly organized into folders. So if you wanted to go into say the pads, you can go in here. Perfect. So just like we saw in the Dr. Rex, you just drag it over, select through your loop or your patch in this case, or go through all of them using the browse tool here. Now let's bring over the tool window and let's bring over an instance of the Polysonic Synth Thor. It's a huge synth. Drag that over here and get this out of the way. Great, so now our keyboard is connected to our Polysonic Synth. Now we've hyped up the Thor pretty hard, but it looks pretty simple compared to the older Substractor Synth. That's because there is actually a mountain of programming options that have been temporarily hidden from us. Click on the Show Programmer and wow, that's a lot of synth. Right now, if this rack was in the real world with a, a mixer and three rack mount modules in it, it'd probably be about three or four feet tall. If we could continue to drop in devices and also multiple instances of those devices, our rack is going to get very, very tall. It's going to be taller than the shack. To help us actually clean things up a little bit, we can toggle these devices between showing all their inner workings or just down to the bare essentials to conserve rack space. Take Thor for example, this sound will play whether we show our programmer or not. So if you want to conserve a little real estate, just hide the programmer right here. Or maybe you want to darken up the sound and close up the filter. We could show the programmer. I could close the filter. And then close that programmer back up to conserve a little bit of real estate. Now you can then minimize these devices even further. Just click on the little arrow icons here that you see all over all of these devices and you can minimize it down to an area where it just shows you the note on, for example, and you can scroll through the patches. We could do the same thing with the subtractor and also the Dr. Rex. You can even do that with the mixer. Now let's open up the mixer again and let's drag over the Maelstrom. Where is it? Right here, the grain table synthesizer. Very, very cool. You can do the same thing just like we've seen before. Scroll through the patches or browse through the patches. Exactly the same thing that we've seen in the Thor and the Subtractor. So we have three synths to choose from. Subtractor, Thor and Maelstrom. Subtractor is based on the early synths like uh, so the Moogs, Prophets and so on that use subtractive synthesis. <laughs> 